lot of people don't like rabbit. My grandfather's way, only with Provencal elements I've been thinking about. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week you might see that I look a little different, and that's because this episode is a little different. Today, we are taking a look at The Rabbit from The Sopranos, my favorite TV show of all time. And to join us is a very special guest. He is none other than Michael Gandolfini, portraying Tony Soprano in the upcoming Many Saints of Newark movie. Michael, come on out here. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Do you say that in the movie at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. we, we get a few good O's, of course. Yeah, well, thank you for coming through, man. Absolutely, um, thank you for having me. First, you know, you and I have a, a, a kind of a weird uh, history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely a little weird, but, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, I was filming Saints, and, uh, you know, when you're on set and kind of in a soprano family, tensions run high, and you get home, and you're kind of buzzing and it's kind of tough to fall asleep. So uh, I would put your show on and it would just kind of soothe me to fall asleep. So I kind of decided, well, why don't I just DM this guy and say basically thank you for for helping me sleep, you know? And we got into a conversation and... and uh, not like a week later yeah. was I walking through Chelsea Market <laughs> and we locked eyes across the room like... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah, and then uh, now we have a beautiful friendship. And now we're dear, now we're dear friends, yes. and we play PS5 together. Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, so we haven't played zombies mode. Not, not yet, yet, not yet, but we'll, we will. We'll get there. The friendship we'll has to grow. Yeah, that takes, that's a new level. <laughs> of, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Jess and I haven't even played zombie modes yet, yeah. we're engaged. Exactly, so. it's, it's a commitment, yeah. Right, Jess? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are making Artie Bucco's family rabbit, or Conio alla Familia, mm. as it's Wow, it's yeah, yeah. No, that's I've memorized good. the entire You show. practice that? Uh, <laughs> it's his family rabbit recipe with some Provencal elements. So, and most notably, he's cooking with one hand because his hand was plunged into a vat of simmering sauce. So he is wrapped up in gauze. So I thought it would be fitting if, especially since you gave me one of my most prized possessions, which are Artie Bucco's actual chef whites from seasons one through three yes, of sir. The Sopranos. Look at that. Arthur from Vesuvio Duo. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah, the first, first one, one explodes. Yeah, it explodes. Yeah. So I'm gonna transform myself now into Artie Bucco by putting on his actual chef's whites. This is what I'm, I haven't put them on yet. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I will. <gasps> Yeah, how do we do this? <laughs> Nobody's put a jacket on me in so long. I feel like a young woman again. Oh, how small is this guy? <sighs> now, does Artie Bucco show up in the movie? Because he was Tony's childhood friend. I don't know. We'll have you to can't see, tell me. Sorry. But, Come on, you can but, tell me. Pretend the camera. Okay. Is that go. good enough? I don't know. That's great. <laughs> it's okay. All right. All right. I'm in Artie's chef woods, which smell faintly of cigars, which is pretty awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. and now uh, let's uh, go ahead and pretend like my arm was just plunged into a vat of hot sauce and let's let's bandage me up, shall All right. we? All right, let's see. Make it uh, as difficult as possible for me to cook. You're not gonna be able to, to cook. Move. Like at all? <laughs> at all, at all. <laughs> That's a threat, yeah. <laughs> all right, there's medical grade tape right here. One of my favorite things about Sopranos is all the like really over the top sh If you told me there was a mobster movie yeah. where the where the, the, the chef, friend of, of the main mobster had his hand plunged into some boiling marinara sauce, yeah. I'd laugh you out of the room. Totally. <laughs> but they managed to do a it's really good like job. It's sort of like a cartoon combined with like a really dark drama, but like their, their favorite, um... <laughs> this is your first time doing this? This seems very learned. <laughs> God. I feel like that's pretty great, actually. Yeah, I'm unable to cook with this hand. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> official. I don't think I can, I, I can't grip anything with this hand. Good. All right, good stuff. Ah! Well, I'm gonna, now we're, now you're gonna play the role, I guess, of the young couple that comes in and opens up a bottle of wine. I love it. And I'm gonna make you dinner with the rabbit that I shot in my backyard. For the record, I did not shoot a rabbit because I am a fing wimp. <laughs> And I'm not gonna do that. Uh, all right, so now, first thing I have to do, okay, not using this hand. 
First thing I have to do is butcher this rabbit a little bit. Mmm, yummy. Yeah, it's a rabbit. Oh, I'm not using this hand. I'm to, gotta get used to this. I'm right-handed. This is not my lucky day. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, little friend. How do you do that? How do you do this with one hand? Yeah. All right, here we go. I you, gotta... can, you can use it. I think no. we can agree that you're allowed to use it to sort of Stabilize things. Stabilize. Right, well, in that things. case, I'll use. I'll um, give you permission. Thank if, you. If you get flack for it, I'll take that. You gotta find the joint, which usually goes along this little strip of fat here, or I'm just gonna cut through the bone. Yeah, who cares. there you go. There we go. Oh, I actually kind of hit it. Okay. You know, one of the funniest. Every time I think about Tony and Artie, as me and you are. Tony and Artie today. <laughs> I didn't um, think of that. That's really funny. <laughs> the first line that Tony says to Artie is, uh, he goes, hey Artie, how's your rash? And, <laughs> and Artie goes, oh, well it, uh, it stings or something like that. And like <laughs> that co line was completely improvised. Your dad improvising that line was amazing, but also his reaction is also great. Cause he yeah. comes in, you immediately see what a sad sack this man is. <laughs> yeah, I remember that line where he comes in and he's just like, and yeah, exactly. Ooh, what is, what that? is that? Yeah, that's an organ. That's an organ. A of, that's that's a kidney, I think. A kidney. Let's just yeah. scrape that right out of there. There you go. Here we go. Here you go. A little yeah. little souvenir. Yeah, I'll that? take it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna kind of. Ow! I need oh, something yeah. to whack it with. You got the meat mallet or something? Yeah. Or do you want cleaver? Cleaver. You want to try cleaving it, hitting it right there with all your strength? Watch your fingers. <laughs> Just up and down? Yeah, maybe even, yeah. Yeah, you got, look at that. Clean as a daisy. There you go. All right, so rabbit's butchered. And now I'm going to stew and uh, stew it with, <laughs> we translated the recipe visible on the page okay. of, of Artie Bucco's family cookbook and he said he was incorporating some Provencal elements. So I'm gonna introduce some herbs that might not otherwise have been there. And the ingredient that Artie, you need to have in there too, as Artie is like a little bit of desperation. A little bit of desperation? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I'm gonna make you a meal. All I don't right. know if it's gonna be any good. Thanks for coming through. Ah! Thanks for coming through today. And uh, don't forget your kidney. I'll take it, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> First thing Artie does is sear the rabbit. When he puts the rabbit pieces in the pan, they're very clearly seared. Uh, so I'm going to start by searing the rabbit. See the math I just did there, how I got to A to B? Here we go. So I got some light olive oil. Eh, maybe a little bit more. You oh yeah, use your ah, hand. shit, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No hand, True. one hand, one hand. I'm also just gonna season these guys lightly with a little bit of salt. Never hurts to season your meat with salt separately. You wanna build layers of flavor. And also it helps the meat retain juices, right? Yes. Yes, it does. All right, let's throw down some rabbit, shall we? Let's get some color on these suckers. Ow. Okay. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Oh no. So question one, do you think Artie's a good cook? I, I think Artie is a good cook, absolutely. Uh, some of the stuff that he's made, when he gets excited about food, I get excited about food. I get some nice fun on the bottom of the pot, that's great. Okay, pancetta. So none of this is seen in the show, but uh, I don't want this font, I got this beautiful font here, I don't want it to burn, and I want to render out the fat from this pancetta, so it's got a little bit of water. Do you think that Artie deserved the things that happened to him in the show? Mm. Mm. I agree that he's sort of one of the uh, victims in Tony's sort of onslaught of tornado. Um, and he's sort of a walking tornado. But I also think that, you, and this is a big part of the movie too, is like you are what you came from, right? Like Tony always says like, what, what do you think I was gonna sell pots in Peru? Like I, my dad was in it, my uncle was in it. And I think that Artie's dad was a chef and you know, he's kind of, taken this life in many ways sort of what Tony admires because he opens his own restaurant he works hard and I think in some ways Tony kind of idolizes that without too much you know he doesn't really want to be arty but I think he respects him for those things so in the show he starts sauteing uh, garlic 
which I'm not gonna do just because I'm gonna burn the garlic if I do that. And I got this beautiful fun in the bottom of the pot. I don't wanna waste that, that's all flavor. See all that brown shit? I just threw that onion in there. It's already brown, that's flavor. All right, so now I'm gonna add some carrots and some celery. All right, this is starting to look nicey nice. I, it, everything I'm doing looks dumb because I'm doing it with my left hand, just so you know. I don't look this stupid normally when I'm doing stuff. Hey, you look good. Let's see that. That's, that's, that's good. a really good impression. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> First up, real quick, I'm gonna throw some garlic in here. Yeah. Some minced, probably about what, two cloves of minced garlic? Nailed it. Three. So he says that he's adding some Provencal elements. So I'm adding chopped rosemary, thyme, and sage. Okay, now we're gonna deglaze the pan with some fing tomatoes there. There we go. Hey. Hey. If you could eat anywhere, out of all the locations that they eat at in Sopranos, where would you want to go eat? Oh, I mean, just to say that I did. Veal parm from Satrials. I, I would probably rather go to Vesuvio, but I want Vesuvio end of season one, like hurricane, like l candlestick lights. Maybe we should eat yeah. this, you know, by, uh, by candlelight, just me and you and <laughs> we got candles? We got candles? Okay, I'm gonna add like a um, quarter cup of wine. About a half cup of chicken stock. Now, I'm gonna shove the rabbit pieces in there. Let me get nestled in there. Nestled. Nestle. I'm gonna bring this all the way down. Oh. oh. Bring this all the way down to a low and simmer it. Now, we're going to, I uh, should hit it with a little bit of salt now just so the salt like cooks into the the nooks and crans. How am I gonna grind pepper? Oh, hey, would you grind some pepper for me? I should grind the pepper. Here, come on over. Nice, 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 that's good. All right, thank you. Okay, that's covering up and getting stewed for 45 minutes, during which time I'm gonna make a very simple risotto. A squirt of oil, a globin of butter. All right, onions nice and soft, a garlic going in, and also gonna add the arborio rice to toast it a little bit before starting. All right, in goes a little splash of white wine, two tablespoons. We're gonna let that cook off. You've become quite close with the cast, and I've seen some fun videos of uh, you and your girlfriend boxing with John Bernthal, yes. which sounds like the scariest thing in the world <laughs> to me. <laughs> He's the best. He is like the best. I mean, they all are like, we became family really quick, which is like so cheesy and like cliche, but like we really did for it to work like, just the best nights sitting around a table and just like, you know, just being these characters and stepping into these roles and like eating food around the table and That's yeah. really great. Yeah. Now, so you have all these actors portraying younger versions of these fully, you know, fleshed out, the w beloved characters. I don't want you to play favorites or anything, but who, when you watch them was like, holy sh that's them. I mean, the really annoying answer, but it's so true, is like everyone. I mean, I think that you don't want to do an impersonation. Yeah. You want to be able to do your own thing. Cause this, and, and I think what makes David so smart and brilliant, and the only way this was possible was to go back in time. Everyone's at a different point in their lives. Yeah. The 60s, the 70s, different, you know, and then um, there's a lot of incredible new characters too. So your father had one of my favorites, one of my favorite aspects of his character was the way he ate, mm. <laughs> which was disgustingly. Yes. And most notably, everything he would eat, especially ice cream, he would stab yes. and stir. Yes. <laughs> kind of like. A hundred percent. Sort of. And there was a reason he ate like that. He ate like that so he didn't have to eat as much. If you move the pasta around, you don't have to be taking bites every five seconds. So you move it around to kind of like look like you're eating, but you're not actually putting food into your mouth as much. So you didn't get as full. That's where it came from. But it became a habit to him. And now I eat like that because I grew up watching him. So like I, when I eat pasta, that's just like, that's how I learned to eat it by watching my dad. So like I do that just because I inherited it. I, I'm shying away from asking you too many questions because I don't want to be like, so, wow, playing your father, that's some, some big shoes to fill. How does that, 
How does that feel? <laughs> I think like one of the things that was awesome was like I I had never seen the show, but I got to become a fan of the show while watching it. A lot of the cast of The Deuce and Chris Bauer, who played my dad, really like helped me sort of navigate a lot of the emotions that were like sort of coming up um, for the first time. Because it was like I needed an initial purge. I mean, look, I had 86 hours of a human being in every which way. He goes to therapy that like, I literally get the inside head of a character. Yeah. Like, so I was able to sort of create that. The perspective that I have on you playing your father, not that you asked, <laughs> uh, but as somebody who's also lost a parent, yeah. is that it's lovely when what we do echoes what our parents did oh. and, and, we, and what our parents do lives on in us. I make a cooking show. I film and star in a cooking show. My mother loved to cook. And my dad is a photographer. And it's really nice. I only realized like last week <laughs> that yeah. that is basically what my dad and my mom did and I'm the amalgamation of that. I actually sat in the movie theater after doing it for three years of filming, of reshoots, of COVID, a pandemic, of like sitting in that theater watching it being like, wow, like me and my dad got to do this together. And like, it was such a cool feeling that I, I didn't expect to have, cause I'd sort of, I think I'd pushed it away to be able to work. And it was so cool to have that like actual feeling. Well, that's really nice. I'm getting misty over here. <laughs> For a very simple risotto, this is quite good. You want to try it? Give some more salt in there. And I made it with my left hand. Which, frankly, yeah, I'm pretty proud of. <laughs> <laughs> my, my left hand. <laughs> my left hand. <laughs> so that's what we're going to serve the oh, rabbit really over good. top of. Dig it? It's really good. It's just as simple as risotto gets. Just chicken stock, a little white wine, a little garlic, a little onion. I can't believe you made that. <laughs> Thanks, I man. I don't make that. You make it. See, I'll show you how to make that it. Was, I should have showed you. I'm sorry. So good. All right, so risotto's done. This guy's simmering. I just took off the lid. It's up to temp, but I want the liquid to be reduced a little bit more and I want the rabbit to be like fall off the bone tender. Tastes a little funny because I don't like rabbit that much. Eh, that's, that's life. The f <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Did you see that? Miguel. Uh, Michael. Uh, <laughs> dinner is served? Yeah. It's four o'clock. I'll serve us up. Here we go. All so right, this please. is just as plain as Jane as risotto can be. I'm gonna make a nice little bed for a rabbit to sleep on. Let's spoon some nice sauce over top, vegetables. Okay, and a little bit of chopped parsley over top just to wake things up a little bit. Pine nuts. Oh, pine nuts, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Damn it, Tony. That's my best Carmel impression. <laughs> This spot on. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and make things a little more romantic here. There we go. Is this romantic or am I like a ghost in the 1800s? And now we eat. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm gonna eat with my left hand for the first time in my life. See how this goes. It's great. Hmm. Right? They're really good. I, that's not bad at all. I don't mind I that know. at all. Yeah. So Michael, you're in this movie. The Many Saints of New York, A Soprano Story. When does it come out? Uh, it comes out on HBO Max, October 1st, and in theaters. I'm gonna go see it in theaters. It's an old fashioned movie. You go to the theaters you to go, see the movie. You buy a ticket. You, you get, get the popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna be seeing it in theaters. If I'll see you there. If you're gonna go see it in theaters, I will be there. I'm gonna be at every show. There you go. You better be there, you know, or else. Or else we'll be dearly upset with you. Yeah, we'll be bummed. <laughs> yeah. It's the modern mafia, just like, <laughs> you, know, you better be there, I'm gonna be really hurt upset. personally. It's gonna hurt my, my feelings. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming by. Ah! Yeah. There's a, I can't do it. I can't not do it. I can't not do it. One more time, I won't do that. Thank you so much for coming thank by, you. man. Thanks for wrapping up my arm. Thanks it's for amazing. having lunch slash dinner, dinner with me. I love Leonard. And I can't wait to see you in this movie, man. I appreciate it. Well, come here, come here. Oh, good to see you, man. All right. Let's eat this rabbit. Let's stab it at him, poke at it. <laughs>